Hello, students. Professor Benavides here. I want to go ahead and uh, tell you a little bit about Chapter 14, Hardware and Drivers. Uh, I made a little outline of the chapter, and I'd like to share it with you. It's also available uh, online. So you're going to see green highlighted stuff. The green highlighted stuff is related to the tasks in your lab assignments. So let's go ahead and start off at the beginning of this chapter. We define what a driver is. A driver is the software that lets new equipment talk to your computer. And not too long ago, there was a lot of problems with drivers. But now there isn't uh, as many problems. You know, so Windows updates them. And nowadays, you pretty much just connect stuff and it works. But this chapter still goes over the things that you need to know in case things don't go right, okay? So you'll also find some other information related to drivers in the uh, chapter 13. So first start off by talking about external gadgets. These are USBs. Now, USBs stand for universal serial uh, bus, but if you look at this little video that I've attached on here, it's if you notice, there's so many different kinds of them, they're not really very universal. So I, I, I found that rather amusing. So I went ahead and attached that video there. So the question is posed, what are the different kinds of USB ports? Notice that it's green. And what are they used for? And, and um, you know, which one is the fastest? So the, the older ones are USB 1.1 and 2.0. The newer ones include the USB 3 and the USB C. The video that I uh, link on there shows you the pictures of some of them. Uh, so what are they used for? They're used for connecting peripherals. And it could be like, for example, a mouse or a keyboard. But they can uh, accommodate a, a huge variety of gadgets. The fastest one today is the USB-C. And it can charge your gadget faster and transfer data faster than anything that we have right now, okay? So there's a section of your book called, of this chapter called Up to Speed of Hubs and Power. And this simply talks about, you know, what happens when you run out of, of uh, ports? Well, you can add a USB hub. And uh, one thing to consider here is that there's something called power, powered or unpowered jacks. And the, um, the unpowered ones just transmit communication signals, whereas the power ones also supply current to whatever is plugged in. So you may need these kinds of ports for uh, webcams and hard drives and things of that nature. So Bluetooth gadgets. I also put a couple of videos on here uh, that I, I um, think you should go ahead and watch. And the green question here is, uh, what page in the system settings can you go to uh, to see if Bluetooth is, is turned off or on? Um, and, and what devices are connected? So you go to start settings, devices, Bluetooth, and other devices. And there's a little toggle right there to turn it off or on. Mine has it because my um, PC, desktop PC, has Bluetooth. It just occurred to me that maybe somebody has a real old computer that doesn't um, have Bluetooth, so um, I guess I'll wait and see if, if that becomes an issue or not. Uh, so what is Bluetooth? Bluetooth is a short-range, low-powered, wireless cable eliminating technology. How do you like that? It's designed to uh, connect gadgets in pairing that makes sense, like a cell phone, an earpiece, a PC and a wireless mouse, a phone and a portable speaker, a PC and a cell phone. So how do you pair them? The, the directions are shown there on, in figure 14.1, but basically you go to start settings devices, make sure Bluetooth is on, and then you click on the uh, uh, add Bluetooth or other device and, and walk your way through it to, uh, to do the pairing. As far as device signing is concerned, it, it, if, if a device is signed it's, it, 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 or unsigned, it simply means that Microsoft hasn't gotten a chance to test those drivers for Windows 10 compatibility or programming uh, solidity. It doesn't mean that they don't work. It just means that they haven't blessed them, okay? 
So what happens if you install something and it messes up your system? You can uninstall the driver and, and rewind your entire operating system to the condition it was in before you installed the questionable driver. This is the, the part where the technician comes in. So you go into, you know, system restore, you know, this is described on page uh, 509, and Windows will automatically take a snapshot of your working system just before you install any unsigned driver. So that brings us to the device manager. And um, I, thought, I just thought you'd note, uh, note this. I usually uh, use a, a, an account um, on my computer that is set to uh, standard, as a standard user rather than administrator. If that's the case that you're in, you're not gonna be able, you may not be able to do a whole lot in the device manager. Um, you may be able to view things, but you won't really change things. So it doesn't make any difference because I'm not asking you to change anything in, our, in your labs. So this may or may not be an issue, but it's something that you would probably want to know that if you have, uh, if you're using a standard account, you probably, you need to log in as administrator. And then if you're still in the standard account, uh, run uh, to get to the, um, to the um, uh, device manager, you will type in devmgmt.msc. And that gets you uh, right to the place so you can have complete rights to make modifications if you do want to do so. You won't be required to do any of that in your lab assignment. So I provide you with a couple of videos on the device manager. And then let's go and talk about what it is. The device manager is an extremely powerful tool that lets you troubleshoot and update drivers for gear you've already installed. It's also a master list of every component that makes up your computer. It's also a status screen that lets you know which drivers are working properly and which ones need attention. Green question, how can you open the device manager and view your devices? To, uh, so to open it, you can go click on start or on the start button, uh, or right mouse click on the start button and then click on the device manager. That brings, that's that, that secret utility menu that the author talks about. So, um, in this particular example, it's not in the book, but I'm at just, ex you have these expand and collapse buttons and everything is listed. I don't know if you notice this, it's in alphabetical order. So let, notice right here, I turned on my Bluetooth. If I had my Bluetooth off, then it would not be visible here. You can all, if I, and back in the good old days, we used to use the control panel uh, to turn this off and on. I think you probably should still be able to do that there. Now, if you have a yellow exclamation point, uh, it, it, it means, uh, that next to your device, it means that there's a problem and you need to investigate what's going on. Back in, and I remember uh, having duplicate devices. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Basically, they want you, the best thing to do is remove both of them, restart the computer, and then it'll um, go ahead and um, uh, come in correctly, hopefully. Uh, you know, anybody remember uh, working with jumpers on the motherboard in order to get these things to work right? So um, to uninstall or to remove them, you would click on the uninstall button in the device tab of the properties window of that particular device. Resolving, uh, resolving conflicts, uh, I, said I haven't seen this in a long time, but um, uh, you wanna go ahead and double click on the error message and find out more about it and then investigate. And they didn't go too much in, in, into that, uh, you know, probably because it doesn't occur to, to any great extent. Um, there's also um, some people that like to ha always have updated drivers all the way, but I pretty much say that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if your computer's working just fine, and the reason for that is because if you update a driver, it may mess up your system and you may end up having to like restore it to a previous point in time. And that's just time away from, you know, from doing something else, you know. So, but if you do want to update your drivers, you would then select, you would go into the properties uh, for that particular device. Here's the example that's, um, that's in your lab assignment. I chose mouse, but it could be anything. It could be like, for example, your um, network card uh, on your PC. So it really doesn't matter. Uh, so, so get it, and the way you get into properties is you can double click on the device or you can right mouse click on it and choose properties. So uh, in the drivers tab, click on the update driver button. I have it shown right here. And then after that, you would then click on search automatically for updates. And then after that, you will get some feedback letting you know if there is something that you can install or if what you have is up to date.
this is what you're going to end up. That last screen is uh, going to end up being your print screen for that particular task. Now, sometimes you do need to roll back the drivers. So you can just simply do that by clicking on the roll back driver button in the drivers tab of the property window. So that, my friends, is the end of my presentation. This was probably one of the shortest chapters I've ever uh, in, in the book. So uh, thank you very much and goodbye.